Welcome back everyone. This time we are continuing with MVVM and learning how to use a relay command. Last week we started creating a basic inventory system using MVVM. We had a simple model, we had a view model, and we had our view to bind our properties to our view model. Now in this video we need to handle button actions. Whereas before we would say in the buttons click we would have some callback that would happen in code behind and we would put our logic in here. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to use the buttons command to then bind to a relay command in our view model, allowing us to do all of our logic in here. So what that's going to look like is if we go into our buttons, instead of click, we're going to say command, and then we're going to bind it just like we would any other property. So let's bind it to an add command. And now let's copy this and paste them in our other buttons. And that way we know we're going to have a delete command and a save command. So now that we're binding this to a command, we actually need to create a class that implements I command so that we can create our commands in our view model itself. So let's go to our MVVM folder, add new item. We want to call this relay command. And this relay command is going to implement I command. So we want to use system.windows.input. And now we want to implement the interface. And that requires an event can execute changed, a public bool method can execute, and a public void method execute. Now we could go implement an I command for every command that we wanted to, but I wanted to show you this relay command class because instead of using these minimum requirements of the interface, we can make it a little more versatile and powerful, which is what many MVVM third-party libraries will give you. So let's start by defining some private action of type object, and let's call that execute. Now what this action is, is it is a method that has a single parameter and does not return a value. So execute is actually going to be a function call. Then we're gonna have a private func of type object bool, and that is going to be can execute. Now a func is very much like an action except that it returns a value of the type specified by the bool parameter. So we're actually going to pass it another function, except this function is going to return a boolean. So stick with me. I understand if you've never seen these before, you might be super confused, but it's going to be really clear very soon. So just hang in there. So now that we have these, we can implement these methods that use them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say return ex can execute is null. So if they do not give a function for can execute, we are going to assume that we can execute. Or we can run can execute with its parameter. So if they do give it a function, we'll execute that function and let that tell us whether or not we can execute. And then for execute, all we need to do is run our given execute function with the parameter. So now we need to be able to create one of these objects so we actually need a constructor. And in our constructor, we are going to take an object to execute. We are going to take func object bool and execute. And we are going to make that one optional. Because remember, if they don't pass it this, we know that we can execute. Then we want to set this.execute is execute. And this.can execute is can execute. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to go inside of this event and on the add of this event, we want to say the command manager dot requery suggested plus equals the value. And then on remove, we want to do minus equal the value. This allows us to better manage our memory by adding and unhooking our events when appropriate. So now we're done with our relay command class, and we can use this for any command in any MVVM project without having to change this at all. To do that, let's go back to our view model. And we know we need an add command. So let's create an object of our relay command called add command. And I'm going to use an expression bodied member with the what looks like a lambda expression to set add command to be a new relay command. And then we're going to give it some execute and we're going to give it some can execute, which then would have to return a Boolean. So let's write a method to add an item. And notice that I took the hard-coded items out of the constructor already. 
So let's say private void add item. And what we want to do is add a new item to our items collection. And let's just give it some default values. We'll just say new item serial number x's and then maybe quantity zero. So now that we have this function to add an item, we can actually just pass this into our relay command. Instead of this blank expression here, our execute will be add item. And now let's say we always want to execute the add command. So let's just not pass it can execute because it's optional and that will allow us to always execute this add command. So let's see if it works, fire it up. Now when we push the add button, we get a new item and we can still change all of our details for that item. So now let's implement our delete command. We'll copy and paste this. We'll say delete command, come down here, create delete item. And now this is going to be delete item. And what we want to do is we want to say items dot remove the item that is selected. So we know an item is going to be selected here when they hit delete. So that is what we are going to remove. And our can execute is going to be the fact that selected item is not null. So we didn't actually have to put a function here. We can put an expression. So this is our expression that is going to evaluate to our can execute Boolean. So now when we run, no items are selected. So our delete button automatically disables itself because of our command predicate, which is this can execute. So if I add, still grayed out, but the minute I select, we can now delete. And when we delete, nothing is selected anymore and it grays itself back out. So the validations and button states can handle themselves. So now we have the save button. So let's copy this again, let's make a save command. I'm assuming our inventory save function will save anything with changes. So I'm going to call it save. And then instead of this expression, I'm going to say can save. So then I'm going to go down here. And I would have a private void save. And then I would have a private bool can save. And this is going to return whether or not I can save. This will do the saving. So while I'm not going to actually implement a real save in this video, I want to show you how it might be used. So this is our view model, separating our view from our model. But we may have another persistent layer like a database or a flat file or something that we need to persist our models to. So we may have a save to file or database call here, and then we need to let the program know whether or not it's saved and maybe update some sort of states. There could be several uses for a scenario like this. Can save could mean, is the database connected? It could mean, does the logged in user have permissions to save? It could mean all sorts of things for your application. So you might need a whole function to check whether or not it can before it actually does. So now without putting any logic in our code behind, we've made a fairly decent inventory system UI with some basic functionality. But the important thing is, is now you have all of the tools to make something huge and amazing with only using these two files to follow the MVVM pattern. Now I encourage you to take what you have learned here and how it works and go look at third-party libraries for MVVM like the MVVM Community Toolkit. Go see what they can do for you and see if you need to use them. If you do, you'll understand how the basis of them work already. And then if you ever need to extend them, you can. Next up, I'm going to talk about some of the aspects in WPF that deal with multi-threading. So thank you for watching everybody. I do appreciate you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Happy coding. And as always, until next time, take care.